Okay. Yeah. Okay, so good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, it's my first, uh, uh, third time here, so I attended all the conferences. I'm very happy to give uh, our support because we are very close uh, as a country and uh, our traditions are almost common and we can share a lot of things, I think. And uh, I'm very happy that uh, the first session was really this uh, Passive House Med uh, initiative, uh, this platform which serves uh, all of you to exchange opinion, uh, experiences which we already made or someone else uh, had and can transfer to everyone else. So this is very, very important for, uh, for all of us. So I'm a um, director of Zephyr, Passive House Italia. Uh, which is the who? There's a, some something is not properly working from the left hand side. Uh, but let's go on. If uh, if it uh, needs to be fixed, maybe we ask the technicians. Uh, so Zephyr begins in 2011. Uh, I'm a building physicist which is uh, a job which, which doesn't exist in Italy, unfortunately, uh, in comparison to what happens in northern countries like Austria, Germany and so on. Uh, it is basically uh, the guy who accounts for the comfort. Comfort means thermal comfort, acoustic comfort, uh, lighting comfort and uh, humidity comfort. So everything which has to do with comfort, namely which is the basics of passive house. Passive house begins from comfort and then you get all the criteria. And uh, we, of course, have the part which is more uh, uh, intended to be present and at the building site. So the practical experience is also very important in a sort of uh, integrated uh, designing process because everyone contributes to uh, all the other people and it cannot be that in a design of a passive house everyone does everything by, by himself. It, it cannot work like this. Uh, so physicists uh, do their job, uh, people from the practical experience do their job and, uh, and it's also important to integrate civil engineers and so on because and also engineers for building services because uh, only by doing so, we can realize low-cost passive houses. If, if you think that passive house is something for rich people, please go. Because this is not the, the, the idea, the target of passive house. Passive house is a concept which is adaptable to every climate, every situation. Uh, and of course, it has to do with a design process which begins from the beginning in advance, so you have to think to the details, you have to uh, speak with the other designers and, and think uh, which is the best solution for it in a low-cost manner. Uh, this is the aim which we have and by doing so we founded uh, Zephyr Passive House Italia in uh, 2011 and we were uh, uh, get the title of IFA affiliate in Italy in uh, early 2012. Uh, what we do is passive house and NFIT certifications. Uh, we make consultancy, uh, calculations and so on. Uh, we, met, uh, we make a lot of courses because as I'm a certifier, uh, I cannot certify myself. So, which means I need someone else who does the job for the design and then give us all the calculations which show that they fulfill the passive house requirement. Therefore, we need a lot of courses for designers and consultants, and of course now also for tradesmen. Uh, by luck, we managed to translate the, into Italian the, the course, which we find really uh, beautiful and very impressive from the practical point of view. It's a three-day course which is being attended uh, by many and many people uh, in the recent times. 
And we also make research and development of low-cost components, uh, which is a consultancy for window manufacturers in order to enhance the quality of their windows. In this period of economical crisis, it's not different from yours in Italy. Uh, we cannot force someone to invest 1 million euro to build up uh, uh, strange things to enhance their, the quality of their windows because they have to reach a higher, a higher quality. By, by the design itself of the profile of the window, we can already optimize a lot of things by choosing uh, other components inside the, the window itself. It can be improved a lot and also the same holds for doors, for example. Uh, so we, we make a lot of research to have uh, passive house optimized or even certified components um, and also for monitoring. This is very important for us because passive house concept uh, started 1991 with the build of the first uh, ever passive house in Kranichstein, suburb of Frankfurt, Darmstadt, Frankfurt. And uh, the main goal of Passive House is that it's not a certification scheme. Uh, in Italy, we have a lot of certification schemes which uh, counts zero. So if you, you can get, for example, a certification for 15 euros on eBay or something like this, which means in Italy, the idea, the nice idea of uh, in, uh, helping the market of, uh, of the building sector by having uh, better quality of the buildings uh, collapsed immediately. So the nice idea of Passive House is that more than a certification scheme is a design uh, tool, is a design approach. And this is very robust and can be monitored and shows that what was designed is in fact consumed. And this is very nice, a very nice message. Uh, in uh, 2010, uh, the International Passive House Association started and uh, as an initiative of Passive House Institute in order to promote internationally the Passive House standard. Uh, there were already some, so first uh, IFA affiliates in some countries and then also Italy came and uh, in order to promote actively the passive house standard so uh, disseminate the concept making courses certifications pilot projects and so on in order that people know that passive house exists uh, can you think about uh, our climate in middle southern part of Italy is like yours basically and uh, we have very, very few examples in the southern part of Italy, which is really unbelievable because people uh, live in cold climates uh, really managed to, uh, to succeed in building passive houses. And a lot, we think about uh, maybe 40,000, 50,000 uh, in the world. Uh, and still, we are missing a lot of potential in the uh, southern part of Italy. Therefore, I'm traveling a lot and I'm giving this message to everybody also uh, that Passive House is economically feasible. Logically, if you think about it in advance, not that you come to the building site to build and you didn't uh, think about the air tightness, there's no detail on it, there's no concept of the ventilation uh, distribution system and so on. Of course, it has to be uh, so the brain has to be used, uh, coming back to what uh, Anne Vogt uh, said before me. Um, in order to be uh, stronger locally, uh, I thought, we thought uh, it was necessary to build up some local network. Uh, because Zephyr, Passive House Italia cannot reach everybody, uh, especially politicians, for example or municipalities and so on. Of course, we can be invited, but if there would be a structure, a local structure, a local association which promote the standard, we would be much, much, much more strong, much, more, much stronger than uh, we are. 
And therefore, we created uh, the so-called uh, IGE passive house, so regional passive house groups, which promote the passive house standard. Uh, more or less, the north is covered up to Emilia Romagna. So this is Veneto, for example, where Venice is. This is Friuli, where Udine is. I don't know if you know it. This is uh, the region of Milan. This is the region with Turin. Uh, this is Calabria, uh, where Reggio Calabria is. Maybe you heard it. Uh, there's nothing else. So we are trying to motivate people, making courses also in central Italy, because it's economically feasible, even there. Uh, there's no big need of heating the, the, the building. And in the southern part of Italy, it's even the opposite uh, with respect to the northern part, which means uh, the cooling demand is much higher uh, or only the only demand of the passive house because heating is almost zero. So, which is the opposite in the north, which means it's the same. We have to insulate, we have to protect ourselves from thermal bridges to uh, um, uncomfortable droughts, air droughts through the leaks uh, and so on. So basically it's the same story, it's not different. Um, for example, in Friuli, they are organizing uh, the regional passive house conferences. All of them are, we are stimulating them to participate to the international passive house days where inhabitants, users open their buildings to show that passive house work. And you can really go there and ask, yeah, come on, tell me, is it really true that you consume so less? Yes, okay, then you can convince yourself. And this is a very good way to disseminate, to convince people to build in this way. Uh, in Veneto, uh, they are focusing more on local meetings and exhibitions. Everyone chooses the best for the region itself. So we are coordinating them, but they are able to freely choose what to do. Uh, in Milan, they are giving a lot of courses and conferences and participating to regional exhibitions. Uh, in Piemonte, they even have uh, the first uh, passive house window component uh, manufacturer, which also participated to the uh, passive house uh, window award last year, and I think it'll also participate next year. And uh, in Calabria, it's just formed, it's just uh, constituted, we are trying Tomorrow, uh, a friend of mine, partner of mine, is going there to discuss with them the program of activities for next year. So this is very important. What they require, first, they were trained, of course, all these, these people are passive house designers, or at least they attended such a course, because we don't want people go uh, and cannot answer even the easy questions. Uh, so they, are, um, they, are, they have a preparation and they obviously immediately recognize the need of um, prepared tradespeople. So we are trying to go there and organize uh, early 2015, for example, a tradesman course. Uh, passive house standards spread worldwide, especially in Europe, uh, where it uh, started from. And uh, what about Italy? So this is a picture. Uh, I put yesterday also this because I got a confirmation that finally also in, in the center of Italy something is finally moving. So we got a, an offer for a certification of uh, 22 d dwelling units in Rome. Okay, uh, I'm lucky, I'm happy. Let's see if it goes on, but uh, it's, uh, there are good signs. Um, we have different categories which we can show you. Single family houses, a lot of them, of course. Uh, Multi-family dwellings, this helps because if the uh, entrepreneur uh, decides to uh, not only for one single family house, but uh, for e his building stock to build in such a way, it promotes as well uh, at its turn the passive house standard. And this also helps the development of the passive house standard. Hotels. I will, I'll be speaking about this uh, in the afternoon. 
Uh, this is the almost the first ever passive house in the world. By a week, we were the second one. Okay, it's the same. Uh, it is, of course, the first in Italy. And uh, this shows, this is also a good way to show the people the passive house work. Uh, if someone is not convinced, this is a, is a very beautiful location located to the, uh, near to the uh, Garda Lake uh, in the northern part of Italy. And uh, okay, someone can go there, experience uh, if there are droughts, if uh, one cannot open the window, if you know all these prejudices which are not true, of course. And you can test them there. So we have elderly homes. Uh, they are uh, investing a lot of uh, in this kind of construction. Uh, the first uh, Italian passive house school were recently certified uh, near Verona. Uh, within the project Eurofit, which was already showed before by Susanne Toima, uh, we are trying to renovate uh, with the Enerfit standard uh, step by step, uh, three kind of construction, so which is hotel, pizzeria, and uh, residential part where the owner of the hotel uh, live. Of course, one of the major challenges is how to make a pizza oven airtight. This is uh, the the major challenge of this project. Of course, it's not easy. And we have to find solutions, which is also nice, because maybe we can contribute to some more passive house components. Uh, office administration, this is a part of a renovation, which costed the same like uh, the national standard. Social housings are coming into play in Italy. And multi-purpose building is one of the largest buildings in Italy. Which, uh, which is close to our office, and we are trying to help them to take her is sort of a, a renovation and extension of the building. We have a lot of issues on air tightness and so on, and uh, quality of the tradespeople, which are not that good. And of course, huge pillars, which, are, which act like huge thermal bridges in the basement. This is the render. These are some. Uh, which we have in Italy. We, in order to disseminate uh, the concept of passive house, we also um, uh, build up uh, a movable passive house module, which we moved throughout Italy, uh, which is a passive house, a completely functional passive house. Uh, and we put them there, we orient correctly, and we show the people how a passive house works. And he traveled something like 6,000 kilometers in Italy uh, and uh, participated at several uh, exhibitions. It was uh, exposed in the city center during uh, Christmas holidays, during the um, um, Christmas market, you know, where people can travel, visit it. Uh, and go away and being aware of a, what a passive house is. These are, so we made a lot of sketches uh, in order to show where the air tightness layer is, how deep uh, is the um, insulation layer and so on. And uh, this is the, these are some of the certification which are active now in Italy. This is the um, giving of the Passive House plaque to the owner of the Passive House Hotel during uh, last International Passive House Days. And of course, as I said, we make certified Passive House design and courses. And uh, these are the numbers. So we did 12 up to now SEF courses with almost uh, 180 people. Uh, most of them passed the exam. Others decided not to go through the exam, but through a certified uh, building, uh, which is also possible. And we did uh, recently several uh, tradesmen courses, and which were also well attended, about 50 people. And we also tried to cooperate and contribute to other countries' conferences uh, in order to exchange our experience and motivate people uh, 
and giving you the feeling that you are not alone. So we also organize our national conferences. This is the um, prize giving of a, uh, of a plaque to uh, uh, a mayor of a municipality who adopted the passive house standard and they intend to reduce the fees for obtaining the construction permit up to 60% of the fees for those who build uh, passive house standard. And there was another one, there's another one. We are trying to motivate also municipalities to foster passive house. They give uh, uh, additional 15% of the planning fees uh, as a reduction cost and additional 10% for those who use uh, sustainability criteria. And this is, was just to show that not only people, not only designers, but also politics can help. If you try to motivate administration, local authorities, this is the best. So, in the end, uh, I always conclude with this uh, sentence of Wolfgang Feist. So, if you intend to do something, think twice and make it when you have uh, money or do it now and do it well. Not that you have to complain afterwards that you, ah, I should have done it before. So, uh, Efaristo. <laughs>